Hey guys, my name is Kibet Sanchez, and for my Art 200 final project, I did it on the artist John Constable. Before I start talking about Constable's life and his artwork, I wanted to let you know why I decided to do my art final on this artist. On January 16th, 2017, my family and I got the terrible news that my grandfather had passed away. He was the type of person who didn't like the idea of living in the city. He loved every little bit of Mother Nature. His, his whole life, until the last breath he took, he wanted to be outdoors, enjoying and exploring every little piece Mother Nature had to offer. When I first started the semester, we were asked to look through the book and introduce ourselves within our piece that would express our personality. The painting I saw was John's painting of the Hay Wayne, England, 1821. Right away, as I observed this painting, my grandfather came to my mind, so I knew that I needed to find out more about this artist and the meaning behind some of his artwork. Enough about me. Now let's talk about John's life. John Constable was born on June 11, 1776 in East Berghold, a village on the river Strout in Suffolk, to Golding and Anne Constable. His father was a wealthy corn merchant, owner of the Flatford Mill in East Berghold, and later Dedham Mill. Even though John wasn't expected to live longer than a day, he became a healthy child who grew up to love the countryside. The Constable country remains at the century of what we may call the world of John Constable. In some ways, this world was rather a small one. His family, his love of landscape, and his artwork were his main constituent. John Constable was his parents' second son, and John was expected to succeed his father in his, the business. After a brief period at a boarding school in Lavenham, he enrolled in a day school in Dedham. At some time during his early teens, John became friendly with a tenant of the cottage close to the front gate of East Berghold House. The tenant, John Dunthorn was six years older than Constable. Dunthorn himself was a fairly gifted amateur painter and he encouraged and instructed his young admirer in the basics of sketching and painting, often taking him along on sketching trips in the surrounding countryside. These scenes, in his own words, made me a painter and I am grateful. Dunthorn was the earliest artistic influence on Constable. In 1792, it was fairly obvious to Constable's family that he had interest in art and not in the family business. In that same year, Constable was introduced to Sir George Belmont, who was to become a great influence on the painter. Later, while visiting relatives in Middlesex, he was introduced to the professional artist John Thomas Smith, who advised him on painting but also urged him to remain in his father's business rather than take up art professionally. In 1796, John was confused on what he really wanted to do. He had to think between his family's business or his love towards art. He then decided to return home and work in his family's business for a bit, but his parents were aware of his deep concern and after a fairly lengthy family debate, it was decided that John should follow his heart's ambition and take further study to see if he really did have sufficient talent to become a full-time painter. In 1799, he enrolled as a probationary student at the Royal Academy in London. In 1802, John Constable wrote a letter to John Dunthorne in which he spelled out his determination to become a professional landscape painter. The letter said, For the last two years, I have been running after pictures and seeking the truth at second hand. I have not tried to represent nature with the same elevation of mind w with which I set out, but I have rather tried to make my performance look like the work of other men. There is room enough for a natural painter. The great vice of the present day is an attempt to do something beyond the truth. By 1803, he was exhibiting paintings at the Royal Academy. In 1809, he became friendly with Maria and his friendship with Maria grew to become love. Maria's family did not agree with the relationship, but without caring about approval, they decided to get married on October 2nd, 1816. None of Maria's family attended the wedding. John and Maria had seven children. In 1817, John painted Dedham Lock and Mill. 
Constable painted this scene during a period of several weeks when making a visit with his wife Maria to see his family in his home area of the Stout Valley. The fact that he was painting his father's mill meant that he had a place to store an easel and canvas. He was able to set up every day to paint outdoors, so it's not a record of the light of a particular moment, but it does aim to capture the character of the place. A big part of that is the sky, which Constable described in a letter as the keynote, the standard of the scale, and the chief organ of sediment. The sky in his sketch is not conventionally sunny, but it does have a sense of light with bright white clouds in the century and patches of light blue sky. Their brightness is empathized by the contrast with the dark clouds around. The diagonal directions of the gray clouds behind the trees brings movement into the scene. This is increased by Constable's tremendously victorious and blockly brushwork in the sky. The reflection in the water brings the skylights down into the landscape. At the same time, there's a defined sense of atmosphere and weather that adds to the conviction of reality and trustfulness that Constable creates. Although he has scraped an income from painting, it was not until 1819 that Constable sold his first important canvas, the White Horse, which led to a series of a six-footers, as he called his large-scale paintings. The painting is of a tow horse being ferried across the river Stout in Suffolk, just below Flatford Lock at a point where the tow path switch banks. Constable, who described the scene as a place representation of a serene, gray morning summer, went on in later years to comment. There are generally in life an artist, perhaps one, two or three pictures on which hang more than neutral interest. This is mine. The painting was well received when it was shown at the Royal Academy exhibition of 1819. It was purchased by John's friend, John Fisher. Constable bought back the painting in 1829 and kept it the rest of his life. There is a full-scale oil sketch for the White Horse in the National Gallery of Art, Washington. He was elected an associate of the Royal Academy that year, and in 1821 he showed the Haywain at the Academy's exhibition. The Haywain, which exhibited at the Paris Salon of 1824, winning a gold medal. At the birth of her seventh child in January 1828, Maria fell ill and died of tuberculosis that November at the age of 41. John Constable cared for all seven children. In 1829, Constable was finally elected Royal Academician just a few weeks after Maria's death. In 1831, two of his closest friends died. In 1836, at the last Royal Academy exhibition at Somerset House, Constable exhibited the Cenotaph as a memorial to Sir Joshua Reynolds. Today, Constable's paintings remain memories to the great man who saw the nature in all her glory and portrayed her in that way. But most of all, the countryside remains not perhaps quiet as it was in Constable's day, but we take the time we can find the tiny gurgling brook, the silent woodland glade, where we can sit just as young Constable sat and admire the tranquility of the nature and all glory. Then we can understand what the young man who came to empathize the genius of English landscape, John Constable. And with that said, this is the end of my 200 art final. Thank you.